Hello all and welcome back to Zoological Point. My name is Kyle and welcome to Shark Week. And by week, I mean week-long episodic educational course. Please don't sue me, Scott Free. I'm trying to teach people about sharks too, but with a focus on facts and less on fear-mongering. Erectolobiformes, also known as the carpet sharks, are an order of shark that date back to the beginning of the Jurassic period. And haven't changed much. I'm super excited to cover my favorite order, so let's not waste any time. Blind sharks are yet another example of a zoological misnomer. Unlike me, they have adequate vision, but when they're pulled out of water, their eyes are tracked into their head and their eyelids close up the eye holes. So when fishermen first caught them, they thought they had no eyes and the name the blind fish was born. This is actually a very similar story to the blobfish, which in its natural habitat looks like a normal fish, but when no longer subject to the deep pressures of living in the benthic zone, looks like a naked mole rat in Botox. If you get injured while swimming in the tropical coasts of the Atlantic or Pacific, have no fear, the ocean comes equipped with nurses. Nurse sharks are a family of four species that can often be found in large rivers of more than 30 sharks at the bottom of shallow waters, typically feeding on benthic invertebrates, slow fish, and even seagrass or coral. Nurse sharks are a very laid-back species and seem to not mind people at all, although, when provoked, they can bite, and they are currently in fourth place for most bites on a human. So let this be a reminder, let sleeping sharks lie. Also called long-tailed carpet sharks, the bamboo sharks are a family of sharks known for their catfish-like barbels and their stingray-like spiracles. Hence the long-tailed nickname, most species possess a tail that is longer than their entire body. Bamboo sharks can be found in the tropics of the Indo-Pacific region and possess some very interesting adaptations. For example, the oscillated e shark has evolved to be able to quote-unquote walk between tide pools during low tide using their ventral fins. And if that wasn't cool enough, they can also shut off non-essential brain functions when the oxygen in their tide pool is scarce. That's probably one of the coolest adaptations in the entirety of the animal kingdom. Moving on to my absolute favorite family of sharks, the Wabigongs are bottom-dwelling carpet sharks native to the Indo-Pacific region that have turned camouflage into an art form. The name Wabigong originates from an aboriginal word which literally means shaggy beard, which references their unusual coral-like tassels which further assist in their lifelong game of hide-and-seek. As with other camouflaging creatures, wabigongs are ambush predators that wait until their lunch is right in front of them before pouncing. I could talk about these incredible ichthys for hours, but I'm gonna move on because I have three more videos to make today. The collared carpet sharks are basically the same thing as a bamboo shark, except they have a pattern similar to a Shakespearean style collar on their back. They're also incredibly tiny, barely growing longer than 90 centimeters. Moving on, we've met the basking shark, we've met the mega mouth, now it's time to meet the third and final filter feeding shark, the whale shark. Able to grow over 18 meters long, the whale shark is the largest living species of fish on the planet as well as the largest non-mammalian vertebrate. As the name would suggest, some individuals can grow into sizes that rival baleen whales. Although they eat almost exclusively plankton, these spotted sharks possess over 300 tiny teeth which are primarily used in assisting with filter feeding. The skin of a whale shark is absolutely gorgeous, covered in one of nature's most stunning patterns. And just like all other shark species, their skin is covered in tiny tooth-like structures called dermal denticles. And if that wasn't enough, the whale shark even has them on their eyelids. Good thing we couldn't see them without a microscope, because the fact that this giant has teeth on its eyelids is terrifying. Last, but certainly not least, is the zebra shark. Now, wabigongs may be my favorite family of shark, but the zebra is my all-time favorite. Found in tropical reefs throughout the Indo-Pacific, the zebra shark is known for its yellow coloration, long tail, and spots? <laughs> Wait, why did scientists name a species after a striped horse when it has spots? Well, unlike weasel sharks, there's actually an answer to this one. When they're pups, they have stripes. Baby zebra sharks grow up in mangrove estuaries, and the stripes help them look like the water shining on the mangrove roots, so it's harder for predators to find them. As they mature, just like how our sense of fashion changes, so do these sharks, and they trade their stripes for spots. This is why they're called leopard sharks in Australia. In America, we already have a species called the leopard shark, so I guess we're stuck calling them zebras for now. Wait a minute. There's no species named after cheetahs, right? Why don't we call them cheetah sharks? That's cool, and they're both endangered. That could raise awareness. I need to start a petition or something. Hang on. 
Thank you all so much for joining me on this trip through the carpet tricks. I hope you'll be back tomorrow where things will get both heavenly and pointy.